Hey guys, it's Alex, and today I'm here with my review for Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan. This is a young adult fantasy novel about Lei, who's a member of the paper cast. In this world, there's a very strict cast system. The moon cast is made up of demons. They're the most powerful, the most renowned, and at the top of the hierarchy. Next is steel cast, who are part demons, part humans. And then finally at the bottom is the paper cast, who are fully human. Lei is one of those paper casts. And she's chosen to be a paper girl for the Demon King. Paper girls are his concubines. She's kidnapped from her home and essentially forced into sex slavery along with seven other girls. This has been a very hyped book on booktube. It just came out in I believe November or December of last year. And it's also one that's been getting a fair number of negative reviews. And I have to say I agree with the negative reviews. I gave this book two stars. I'm going to start with my positive thoughts on this book because there are so few, and then this will potentially turn into a rant review, depending on how irritated I'm feeling in about 10 minutes. But positives first. This book is written in first person present tense, which is usually very difficult for me. That always feels a little bit jarring and a little bit unnatural for me to read, but in this book it didn't bother me at all. I had a lot of issues with the writing, but that actually was done fairly well. Also, I was interested in a number of aspects of the world. I thought the use of a caste system was interesting or could have potentially been interesting. And I thought the focus on the king's concubines or on his sex slaves as they literally were could have been interesting and could have provided the story with more nuance. But it didn't. It had some potential, but overall I was very disappointed with that. Getting into my negative thoughts, there are much more of these and that was sort of the extent of my positive thoughts on the story. I thought the writing style was particularly awful. People kind of hail this book as being beautifully written and James Patterson in the letter or whoever wrote that letter for James Patterson, because I don't believe he wrote that himself, described the writing as very lyrical. And I love the really beautiful descriptive lyrical writing, but in this book it felt very cheap and lazy and poorly done. It felt like she would just go on for paragraphs about oh, this girl has raven hair, and that girl has alabaster skin, and all these very cliché descriptions. It wasn't that it was beautiful descriptions, it was just that it was an excessive number of cliché descriptions. And I wouldn't usually mind that they were kind of cliché, like, if you want to say someone has raven hair, sure, fine, whatever. That's not really going to bother me, it's just that there was an absurd number of them in this book. It was annoying to read, for the most part. It was also annoying that her sentences were so long, and this was again part of the problem I had with the description. There would be so much description, but it'd all be in one sentence, and it would just be an endless number of commas in this sentence that would be an entire paragraph long. And that happened a lot, and it was just kind of frustrating. There would be so many different ideas within the same sentence, and it was just seemed like she could have split them into different sentences, and it would have felt less messy. A slightly nitpicky thing that had a little bit less to do with her writing style was that I was really annoyed that she kept describing humans with animal qualities. And that's something that is very specific to this book. The demons have physical animal features. The demon king is a bull, so he has hooves of some kind. Or he has like, he has literal bull features. An easier way to describe it is the steel cast. The steel cast are part demon, part human, so they have a couple of animal features. Like if they're a cat steel cast, they might have cat ears, or a cat tail, or a little bit of fur on their chest, or whiskers or something. Very small things. And they would be, have literal animal features. But then when it came to paper cast people, she would sometimes describe them as being cat-like or having cat eyes or things like that and that was really frustrating for me in the story because I was having a hard time telling who had literal animal features and who had figurative animal features and that just seemed like a really easy fix like if you're writing a book where some people have some physical animal qualities don't describe the people without physical animal qualities as being like animals. I really hated that. Like, it was a small thing in the story, but it was so irritating. It also felt like she was talking down to the reader a lot. She had this tendency to explain everything. And when I say explain things, I don't mean in terms of world building or the magic or whatever the caste system was. I mean she would explain things within the story. 
A specific example from early on, Lei was talking to someone about Ren, who is her love interest at one point in the story, and she said it appeared that Ren hated them all, or acted like she hated them all, and acted like she was better than everyone. And the person she was talking to said, most people hate Ren's family, and Ren is aware of that fact, so it must be very hard for her. At which point I expected the story to continue on, because that seemed fairly self-explanatory for me. But then they continued on, and immediately Lei was like, oh! That must mean Rin is afraid we all hate her, and that's why she acts so distant. And that seemed very unnecessary to me, and it kept happening throughout the story. Like, she'd add these secondary lines to explain what was going on and to explain these things that I feel like most people would just infer from the writing. They were fairly obvious, you don't need to spoon feed us every bit of information. That was just kind of irritating for me. Like, I don't enjoy when authors treat me like I'm dumb and I can't figure things out on my own. I get that I'm a bit older than the YA audience, but I feel like teenagers could also figure these things out on their own. Teenagers are very intelligent people, and authors should give them credit for that and not talk down to them, like I felt Natasha Nyan was doing in this book. I also didn't quite understand the world in this book. I never felt like I fully got a grasp on what the world was like on why the caste system was the way it was, on what the difference was between demons and people. I understand that the demons had literal animal features, but it seemed like there had to be more than that for the demons to be the ones in power. I don't understand what made them demons and what a demon literally was. I felt like I needed a little bit more explanation on that. I needed a little bit more world building instead of sitting around describing all the characters with raven hair to tell us how beautiful they were. I liked the idea of the caste system a lot. I thought that was very interesting. But it seemed like it wound up being a casualty of this poorly written book. It was never fully explained or fully explored. And I wound up just going along with it like, okay, that doesn't fully make sense, but sure. And that felt like a lot of the book for me. And going along with that, I felt like that about a lot of the characters too. I never understood their actions entirely. They didn't come across so much as people as they did puppets who existed to propel the story forward. Their actions never felt like they came out of fully developed people. They were just there for the story's sake and for the plot's sake. At one point, the demon general who kidnapped her from her home in the beginning of the story confides in her about the scar on his face and about how he's lost the trust of the king. And this is a demon who literally has no emotional connection to her, who doesn't trust her, who doesn't really see her as fully human, who never talked to her prior to that moment, and he's just confiding these personal things in her about how he hopes to regain the king's trust. And that didn't make sense. And that happened numerous times in the story where random characters would just confide in her so that they would be more fully developed, so that we would understand those characters had secrets too, and these were their secrets. It didn't really seem like there was a good reason for them to confide in Lei, other than, oh, I, the author, know this information about these characters, and this is the best way to share it, or this is the only way I can think of to share it, and it felt very, very lazy. There are better ways to give characters depth than just to have them confide all their secrets in the main character, and I would have given that a pass, like, maybe once or twice, but it happened more than half a dozen times in the story that I can just think of off the top of my head. One of the complaints I've heard a lot about this book is the insta-love, and I do find myself slightly disagreeing on that front. I don't know that I would personally call it insta-love, because it didn't feel like insta-love for me. There was instant attraction, but it did feel like the relationship between the two characters was built a little bit more than I would expect from insta-love. However, I think the reason a lot of people keep calling it instant-love although it may be instant love for some people, is because the characters were so flat and the romance was so poorly written. I do think there was some build up to the romance. I just think the characters were so poorly done and the characters were so boring and flat and puppet-like that it wouldn't have mattered how long the romance took. It always would have felt awkward and stilted and forced. That was how I felt about the romance. It never felt like these two girls who were in love because I was down for a fantasy romance between two of the king's concubines who like fought to take over the crown or whatever. That sounds cool, but when you have these incredibly flat boring characters who have no personalities, who are just 
puppets for the story. The romance is never going to work. I promise I'm coming to the end and this is my final specific point on that, this book. And that is the victim blaming. I have not seen that many in-depth reviews on this book and I'm going to look up more after filming this because I didn't want to like have other people's thoughts and words in my head while I was filming my own review. But the victim blaming really bothered me. And I will say part of it was within the narrative of the story and part of it was dealt with within the context of the story. So that was fine with me. But there was this unresolved victim blaming that really concerned me when you have a book about these eight young girls who are sex slaves, who are being raped repeatedly. At one point, Lay resists. Lay doesn't want to be one of the king's sex slaves. She was kidnapped from her home. She's forced to be here and train just to be a sex slave for him. And she resists. So she's punished for that. And one of the girls goes on and on about Lay's integrity and how wonderful it is that she resisted and how she has so much integrity. And that really bothered me because it implies that the girls who didn't resist, who were still raped, who were still forced to be here, whose families have been threatened, whose lives have been threatened if they don't do exactly as the king wishes, have somehow less integrity than Lay does. That made me super uncomfortable. And with a topic as sensitive as rape and sexual slavery. I really expected it to be dealt with more sensitively than it was in this book, and I really couldn't find myself recommending this book to anyone, especially young teenagers. Just praising someone's integrity for not being raped seems so wrong to me, and I don't think that was well handled at all in this book. Overall summation of my thoughts, this book seemed poorly written and clunky with flat characters and a plot that didn't fully make sense. I didn't like it at all, there wasn't really much that I did like about it, and I really don't understand what anyone sees in this book because I'm sure there's much better YA fantasy out there. This was just pretty awful and I was disappointed because it does have a very interesting sounding premise and it could have been great. I definitely won't be continuing on with the story and this did not leave me wanting to read anything else by Natasha and Jan. I was very very disappointed in this book. Let me know down below if you've read Girls of Paper and Fire or if you're planning to. I know there have been a lot of mixed reviews for this book. Some people really love it and some people really hate it. Clearly I was more towards the latter on that, but I'd be really interested in hearing if anyone who really loved this book watches this video, what you thought about my thoughts on this and if you disagreed on anything I had to say because I'm really interested in what people do see in this. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see y'all again soon.